Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. I'm sorry it took me a really long while to upload, probably most of you don't care. But what happened was I was at Disneyland, Disney World rather, for three weeks or so with my family and I didn't do any uploads within that time. Because I just, I didn't want to take videos while I was on holiday and upload on my YouTube because I wanted to spend time with my family. I did it at uh, Disneyland because... Uh, I pretty much was bored and I didn't have much else to do. Uh, in case you don't understand what this video is about, basically I'll be explaining what it would be like if Jeff the Killer had Pokemon, had a Pokemon team. And I'm, I've got a little light down here, which is illuminating my face, trying to make this look scary. It's probably ruining the mood because the rest of the room is pretty light still and I'm wearing the R2-D2 hat I got on um, holiday. But... Anyway, still, so, most of you might not know this, but, uh, I am a big fan of urban legends known as creepypastas, and for a while, me and my friends have dis been discussing what if creepypastas, certain creepypasta characters had Pokemon, and, uh, this is what this video is about, basically, so one of the most well-known of these urban creepypasta legends is a story known as Jeff the Killer, and... Uh, Jeff the Killer is a creepypasta that is very scary, very popular, and very well known. But what happens is, in this video, I will be explaining what his role in a certain Pokemon game would be, what the his origin would be, if he has one, and what Pokemon he would have on his team if he did. Uh, so, let's just start off with the uh, role he would assume in the game. Now, he would probably, considering he is a murderer, a very scary murderer, he would probably be an evil team leader, or a grunt, preferably a leader, because he's a very dangerous creepypasta. Now, an origin story for him would basically sort of remodel, like, the, uh, the backstory he has in, um... <coughs> In his original story. Now, in case you don't know the original story of the killer, let me explain to you. Basically, what happened is he moved to a neighborhood, a brand new neighborhood. He got picked on by some bullies who uh, who live in a rich neighborhood, and they bring guns around with them. And they eventually, they kept picking on him, eventually to the point where he was covered in gasoline and petrol and set on fire. Which basically permanently damaged his skin, turning it white, and his hair, turning it black. And what happened is this whole event drove Jeff in j drove Jeff insane, and he uh, basically got a butcher's knife, cut his face, cut off his eyelids to make him look like he's constantly smiling and to stop him sleeping, and he just ru uh, put his wrath on the world. He killed the bullies, he killed his own family, killed a bunch of people. And that's basically it. Now, what I want to try and do with the story for this one is the fact I want to kind of try and reiterate it, saying he moved to a certain new neighborhood in a different region, I suppose. Um, and he got picked on by some bullies, saying that him and his partner, a Ponyard, in case you don't know what Pokemon that is, it's the one with the little claws, um, were actually too weak because of as a trainers, and they ganged up on him with their Pokemon, which I'm not going to specify, you can just leave that to yourself. So after a while of this happening, Jeff decided he would, um, get revenge on these bullies by forming an evil team. Now, for the moment, we'll just call it Team Creepy Creepypasta, because I can't think of much. And what happens is he trains an awful lot with Team Creepypasta, evolves his Ponyon into a Bisharp, defeats the bullies, and he's gone so nuts because of these guys that he actually steals their Pokemon. He steals his family's Pokemon. Instead of killing everyone he killed, basically, he just steals their Pokemon with his help from Team Creepypasta. Now, um... Sorry, nose is a bit itchy. Now, uh, now we get on to, uh, what... Pokemon he would have on his team. So, as I, as I obviously just stated, his partner will be Bisharp. Now, Bisharp is a Dark and Steel type, and the reason it's Bisharp is because uh, Jeff the Killer's signature weapon is a knife, a signature butcher's knife, basically. And Bisharp has these awesome blades on his arm, kind of like Gatorade and Sceptile, but neither of those are Steel types, so yeah, Bisharp just works the best. I don't care that it's four times a week to fighting, everyone uses it. 
It's it's really good. So, um, another Pokemon that I put on this list due to, like, cutting and knives is Absol, because it has the little horn thing. Um, which reminds me very not much of a blade. It can use moves like Cut, Slash, and Psycho Cut with that blade on its, on its head, that horn, whatever it is. But, um... Absol was originally going to be his partner and his Mega Evolution. It's still his Mega Evolution, but it um it was not his partner anymore because I didn't think it would work that way. Um, the rest of his team only consists of Zoroark for his um for his very like how do I put this? Uh, I said for his like very deceptive move I uh uh mood I guess like he's very psychopathic and very insane basically and Zoroark likes to play tricks on people something like that you know what I'm trying to say uh Spiritomb is also on his team only because I hate Spiritomb and it's really annoying and I figure that Jeff the Killer would use something like that the reason I find Spiritomb annoying is because the only Pokemon type that it's weak to at this point is Fairy which didn't exist before Gen 6 so Spiritomb is very powerful. I could beat it with my, like, Sylveon or something, but unfortunately I don't always have Sylveon on hand. So I'm always just uh, inclined to just spam attacks that are just normally effective. And being a Dark and Ghost type, it's pretty hard. Uh, and the other two team members I just put there because they're shady Pokemon and they're very dark uh, are Crocodile and Tyranitar. Now, Tyranitar... Uh, is very very powerful and I deserve he needs a powerhouse and so is Crocodile. Crocodile is really good and it's a Pokemon that a lot of people like. Now the thing is, you might notice a reoccurring thing with this uh, Pokemon list. I, they're all up on the board by the way, which is why you're wondering I'm looking this way. The reason they're all, uh, the reason they're all on his team is because if you notice, all of them are part Dark type. Absol is pure Dark, Bishop is Dark Steel, Zoroark is Dark, Spiritomb is Dark Ghost, Crocodile is dark ground and Tyranitar is dark rock, so his entire team basically consists of dark types. Because in all honesty, he's probably the darkest creepy pasta. Now, I um, will be uploading more videos like this in the future, like maybe for other creepy pastas. Maybe one for I for currently I have a few planned at the moment. I have Hero Brine, Sonic.exe, Squidward Suicide, Slenderman, and The Rake are all planned, but I'll talk with my friends and maybe you could leave suggestions in which other ones I should do. Now I'm also trying to, gonna announce a new series that's coming called basically if characters if certain characters had Pokemon, had partner Pokemon as well. Because I will be taking characters from different games like Undertale and Overwatch and Team Fortress 2, and uh, giving them Pokemon teams. I'll be explaining sort of like how I did for my Pokemon team, or explaining uh, sort of a backstory, the origin, basically, um, how many Pokemon they would have on their team, because honestly, they're not all going to have six. Jeff is only having six because he's an important character. Um, why they'd have that many, that much, that many Pokemon, and what Pokemon they would have, and if there's any like general themes, sort of like how Jeffs are all dark types. So um, I will uh, see you all in the next episode, and uh, peace out, I guess.